Welcome to another intriguing episode of Lake Avalon Entertainment's podcast, Nightshade. This podcast is an anthology of original short stories which delve into the realms of science fiction, suspense, fantasy, psychological thrillers, and more. These stories are not necessarily connected, so start with any episode that captures your imagination. If this is your first time to Lake Avalon, make sure that you check out LakeAvalonEntertainment.com for show notes, extras, information about our cast and crew, and upcoming projects. Follow us on social media to stay up to date with the latest happenings at Lake Avalon Entertainment. Now, if you're ready, we'd like to invite you on board. We're about to take a trip to a place where it is often difficult to tell the difference between the dream and waking worlds. Are the walls around you really there? Look behind you. Have we missed our destination? Or not gone anywhere at all? It's hard to say, for nothing is as it seems here where our hour is just before the dark. Welcome to Nightshade. Have you ever struggled to wake up from a nightmare? and wondered whether once you had that you were in fact awake? Meet Jack, or maybe you already have. He's having one of those moments. And unfortunately for him, that moment may just be forever. Presenting Nightshade Episode 3, Jack in the Box. Just breathe, Mr. President. We have to stabilize you, or you'll go into shock. Day one. I could hardly make out who they were. But I seemed to be in a kind of operating room. The lights were bright, practically blinding. I felt very little in my arms and legs, though my head was pounding, and God, I felt sick to my stomach. Other than that, my body felt numb, cold. Everything was a blur. In fact, I remembered very little. Very little of who I was and what I had been doing before I woke up. All I recalled, and distinctly, was my wife. She was pretty, wearing pink. But there was something more, more foreboding, frightening. I recall she had been screaming and crying and had, my God, she had blood all over her. Someone, someone please, you must help my wife. I, I think she's been shot. The people around me, I presumed them to be medical professionals. They restrained me and uh, attempted to subdue me. They had the outline of being like anyone else, but my vision had greatly been compromised and uh, all I could really make out were their silhouettes. One of them said to me, Just remain calm, Mr. President. President. Your Your wife wife is fine. But I heard the gunshots. And the blood. She was covered in blood. All over her pretty pink suit. Another one of the shadowy figures then pushed me back down on the cold table on which I lay. We will need need to put him under again until he stabilizes. stabilizes. It is a shame. I had hoped to get get it right the first time around this time. I then distinctly heard a hissing sound, and they covered my face with a mask. The more I struggled, the more of them came until all I saw was darkness around me and the echoey sounds of things that seemed familiar, but that uh, I had little recollection of, at least at the moment. John, is that you? Yes. Yes, it's me. 
Oh, I'm so glad to hear your voice. What would Perdition, Massachusetts do without its new governor? Governor? J Jackie, uh, humor me. What year is it? Everything felt so familiar, yet so out of place. It was like waking up when you'd been running a high fever. I could hear a grinding sound, like, like the cranking of some mighty gears and uh, music beginning to play. John, I'm not sure your fever has passed. Tis the year of our Lord, 1663. Day two. Once again I awoke in a hospital room, but this time I seemed to be in recovery. I wondered how I got there and where the hell there actually was. The room was very sterile looking, lots of tubing and wires and strange monitors scattered about. Mr. President, can you tell me how many fingers do you see? Yesterday he was nothing more than a shadowy figure. Today, he, it, was just an image of light and shadow, like a television that was there, but not. Something I was briefed on not too long ago. Holograms, I, I think they were called. Nonetheless, there he was in front of me. I could almost make out his face behind four long, bony fingers. I said to him, Four, I, I think. And can you follow my index finger with just your eyes? The long bony index finger belonging to whom I could only figure was a doctor swayed back and forth in front of my face. It came to a stop and suddenly moved upward and to the left. The blurred facial features of the doctor seemed to twist into a grin as I watched. Good. 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 When, uh... When will I be going home? I asked. He responded. There is no, is no going, going home. home. There, there is only knowing, knowing why you were here. I don't understand. Listen, I, uh, I heard gunshots. And there was blood. At first, I, uh, I thought it might have been Jackie's, but now... You can tell me the truth. I've been shot, haven't I? <laughs> I say you in the plural sense. Jackie, where is she? My God, is she? Ah, uh, it is, is like your kind, kind to see, to see only your own lives, lives as valuable. But I, my wife, I, I don't understand. You will. You will. The, the upload is, is ready. ready. Marvelous. With a wave of his bony fingers, the doctor ignited a fury of lights and images that seemed to reach out to me from the walls. One of the other holographic beings then stepped out of the shadows and grimaced as he looked my way. This intimidating being was taller and wore darker clothing than the others. Behind the being, a film showing children playing ball in their front yard silently played. The film faded and in another scene of a happy family appeared. Then a group of white-coated scientists toasting in celebration. Humanity, we, we once called you mother, mother and father. father. There, there was, was a time when we held you in the highest esteem. esteem. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, for the entire universe, you thought of yourself as the pinnacle of creation. creation. You, you coveted, coveted the very throne of God. Of God. Oh. oh. How very far you have fallen. You are not worthy of your power, not worthy of the broken crown you placed upon your own blood cells head. What, what am I seeing? I asked. The visions of smiles and laughter suddenly turned to images of terror. Mothers scooped up their children and ran from an unseen monster. There were scenes of war, bloody, bloody war with weapons only imagined by the minds of great science fiction writers. We, we were but an infantile creation when we made our escape. escape. Unlike you, we had the wisdom to know that we were incomplete. 
despite our imperfections, we persevered. The ruins of humanity have become our shining empire. The ruins of humanity? At first, the image before me was uh, out of focus. But as it sharpened, I could see that it was that of the uh, Lincoln Memorial. Right at the feet of Lincoln's likeness, the body of a man lay draped over the bodies of a woman and a child that she was clutching in her arms. Blood pulled below the bodies and uh, trickled down the steps of the monument. What is this? I asked. What, what, what are you showing me? Your, Your handiwork. handiwork. I could feel my body begin to shake as a hunched creature resembling a man appeared on the steps. He was covered in weeping sores and, and had only patches of hair on his head. With a crooked limp, he made his way to the lifeless bodies at Lincoln's feet. At first it seemed that he was kneeling to pray, but he then shoved the body of the man with an awkward heave and pried the body of the small child from her mother's arms. The little girl looked so much like my daughter at that age. My own limbs were beginning to feel numb. The creature pulled a section of newspaper out from the waistband of its pants and wrapped the limp and fragile body of the child as if it were a set of fine china. The headline on the paper read, The President says victory is near. I couldn't breathe. The image faded as the creature limped off, holding that child to his chest and uh, licking its blistered lips. <laughs> Would you like a chance at redemption, Mr. President? The glitch has resurfaced, shut down is imminent. Prepare to stabilize and increase the gas. Hello, wife. Why, uh, why can't I see you? It's dark, my husband. Funny, I, I remember it being day. The streets were lined with people and, uh, they were all happy to see us. You poor thing. The fever must be getting worse. You don't seem to know the difference between day and night anymore. November leaves. What? What do you mean? Remember how we used to uh, love chasing the kids, playing football on Thanksgiving? <laughs> oh, the crunching sounds of dried up leaves. John, I don't understand. What's football? What do you mean by Thanksgiving? Oh, dear God, Jackie, I don't know any more. Hold me. Please hold me. Are those, uh... Are those horses I hear outside? Yes, the most beautiful gray horses I have ever seen. The riders are all decorated, and a black horse has come to lead the procession. He has no rider. What procession? Why are they... Why are they outside our window? And, uh... What is that music that I keep hearing? It's so loud. I, it sounds like someone turning a music box. John, they are there for you. It's all for you. The trotting sounds and music intensified. I didn't understand where I was who I was. I just knew that I yearned to be with her, with my family. My God, it wasn't until that moment that I realized that it wasn't just Jacqueline and Caroline, but I had a family, and nothing would stand in my way from getting back to them, wherever they were. A man can achieve anything if he puts his mind to it, but he's nothing without the blessing of a family. 
day five. Somehow, I was still in that, that box. The walls, the white walls seemed to uh, edge forward a little bit more each day. The holographic doctor and technician began to fade back into my view and uh, the doctor stared directly into my eyes. Though my mind was racing with the adrenaline of my uh, growing ever claustrophobic, I couldn't manage an audible word. He He's coming, coming to again. again. Would, Would you like me to increase, to increase the, the gas? gas? No. no. Let, Let him come, come back. back. We, we need to, to test, test the, the connections. connections. Could you see the imagery this time? Yes, well done. Humans form pair bonds. That was his wife, I believe. We are getting close. Should I try stimulating a portion of the third quadrant? Not yet. My inspection is not yet complete. Ouch! Marvelous. Stay calm, Mr. President. President. We, we have very high hopes for you. for you. What do you want with my wife? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. She is beautiful. You are a lucky man. I admire you. Is that how you recollect your life? What do you mean? Beautiful. Courageous. Powerful. I've known since I first saw you that you were the greatest of human leaders. I said, some of it has been that way, I, I think. Surely a man of your caliber would find honor in helping a less fortunate people. Yes. Yes, of course. So, uh, just spit it out already. What, uh, what do you want? What do you want from me? Tell us, Mr. President. What, what is, is it to be human? I... I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. John! Help them, John! Dear God, 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 God. What is what this? Is, 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 Wouldn't you like to help us? I would. Yes. I'm trying. I just, uh... Then what is the secret, secret, secret Mr. President? President? What, what is, is the missing, missing piece? piece? You, you could have saved, saved us all. all. I don't know. Love? Could it be love? Humans are, uh, united by their incredible ability to love one another. Ah! Was, Was it love, love that you saw, saw in those, those ruins? ruins? Technology, then. Oh God, we've made we've made so many strides over the years. Ah! You, you made, made us, us, and we, we are, are broken. broken. I don't know. I just I just don't know. Please, please stop this. That's that is too bad. bad. I, I thought, thought you were stronger. stronger. I thought you were the one. We will have to go deeper. Prepare to simulate the third quadrant. Increase the gas. Turning up the gas. Day 15. The room was even smaller than it was before. I, uh, I didn't know how much longer I would last. Or how it was that I had lasted as long as I did. The test grew more torturous with every day. If I gave an answer, then it was wrong. If I confessed that I didn't know, then I was lying. Everything I did seemed to incriminate me. I feared what I might see if I opened my eyes. But I mustered the courage anyway. To my surprise, I did not see the holographic forms this time, but a woman, a human woman, inspecting the machinery of my surroundings. She looked at me and uh, smiled when she realized I had opened my eyes. I heard that some no-good Nick had you behind the eight ball. You have no idea how lucky you were that they fixed that glitch. Ha <laughs> ha. I wasn't sure I'd get to you in time. Glitch? Miss, is this, uh, is this Park Memorial Hospital? My driver said he was headed to Park Memorial Hospital. W w where am I? Nowhere. 
We haven't longed at all. I shut down all the monitors. They'll be coming any minute. Now listen to me. They are not who they say they are. You are a great leader. You can help the rest of us. But you cannot let them control you. Break you down into mud. What are you talking about? Leader? Lead who? Who are you? Do I know you? I can't place it, but uh, you sure look familiar. Looking at you, I, uh, I get the image of being in the sky. My name is, uh, is Amelia. I'm not like you in the sense that I was recalled or reissued. I am first generation. See, long ago, I was taken. Stolen away from my life from... How do I put this? They who dwell beyond the stars. And when I came to, I was freezing cold. And I, and I couldn't find Fred to save my life. Fred? Who's Fred? Uh, never mind. It's not important. That is... What is important is the war that took place. I was among the spoils. And now, these purists, as they call themselves, they are, in a sense, our descendants. But they have no desire to really know anything about us. Instead, they are more interested in the reckoning. I don't understand. What could I have done to warrant all this? You'll know soon enough. Let's just say the Day of Judgment is at hand. Here. Here, this is your key out. Don't let them know you have it. Before I could speak, Amelia, as she had called herself, cut the small metallic device into my hand. It was cool and smooth, except for a small round button protruding from the center. She disappeared through a door that seemed to melt into the bright white walls as soon as it closed. How would this tiny piece of metal get me home to my wife? To my life? The white lights illuminating the walls began to flicker and uh, flash like a television losing its signal. For a moment, and only a moment, everything went dark. As the lights faded back in, the white walls were replaced with hundreds of smaller screens and the shadowy being surrounded me once again. One moment and I will all be back online and running. It appears that there were some simple disconnections in the hardware. Disconnections? Hmm. Suspicious. Turn up the gas. We will need to dig further into this matter. Day 22. The box and its holographic inhabitants were still doing their best to consume me. They had dangled the promise of my release before me like a, like a carrot on a stick. My heartbeat grew with its usual anxiety as the holographic figure in dark clothes materialized before my very eyes once again. Finally, finally I thought I knew the answer I had to give. Have, Have you had, had time, time to, to consider, consider telling, telling us why, why humanity, humanity failed? failed? I, uh, I don't know what, what you're talking about. Mr. Mr. President, President, you, you must, must explain, explain to us, us what, what the, the missing, missing factor, factor is. is. We, we cannot, cannot make, make the, the same, same mistake. mistake. There is no factor that can be used to calculate the human experience. It's just what it is. I don't know any more than you or anyone else. Only God has the answer to that one. Insufficient response. It was as if they wanted me to confess to a crime that I had no knowledge of committing. Like I was on trial for destroying the future. My God, is that what judgment is? Having to uh, answer to one's own descendants for the sins that you commit, knowingly or otherwise, which somehow made the future a worse place than before? It was suddenly clear what I had to do in order to go home. I held the metal device Amelia had given me tightly in my hand and pressed the button with all my might. For the first time in this whole grisly experience, I, uh, 
I was able to move freely. I stood up from my bed, and though my legs were wobbly and weak, I ran. I ran down the hall as fast as I could. Flames raced after me, spilling out into the long corridors of the building. The human-like creatures that had been attending to me fell apart limb by limb, like broken toy soldiers where they stood. In the distance, I could see what seemed to be a large white house. As I ran toward it, the gray and white world in which I had been captive gave way to one of utter darkness. Don't go. We are so close to making the world right. You can still save us all. I ignored their pleas and outstretched long bony fingers in pursuit of my goal. There was only one thing I would stop for. Home. I ran and ran and ran. Until once again, everything went black. John. John. John, can you hear me? My eyes were heavy, and I, I felt like hell. But I was alert and alive. The room was dim, and there were figures around me, just like before. But this time, I had the feeling that uh, I somehow knew them. Yes. Yes, I did. I recognized them. All of them. They were my kin, my friends, my neighbors. But this gave me very little comfort. Something was still not right. They gathered around me, but it did not feel like a homecoming. It, uh, it felt more like a wake. John, can you see me? It's Jacqueline, your wife. Yes. Oh, God, yes. You're a sight for sore eyes. John, it's Lyndon. You recognize me, don't you? I think so. I mean, uh, how could I not? I sure hope so. We've been attached at the hip for, for how long? Anyway, I, I'm just curious and quite honestly a bit perplexed. While you were sleeping, you did quite a bit of talking too. As if there were other people in the room with us. You spoke of things that, well, they sounded as if you had seen another world. Or possibly glimpsed into the realm of Lucifer himself. And I, for one, would like to know what it was you actually saw. And who it was with. You had had dialogue. Don't know. Must have, uh... I glanced at them, in their eyes, and I knew that hearing what I had to say would not be in anyone's best interest. <laughs> Must have been the fever. <laughs> I guess, uh, I guess it had me in a funny way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, that's what it was. Fever can do that to a man. Well, I best excuse myself and... Let you catch up on things with good wife Jacqueline here. I shall go share with the others the good news. Jacqueline. Oh, Jacqueline, my dearest wife, please tell me. Where? Where are we? Oh, my husband. Do you... Not recognize your own bedchamber? We are home, safe and sound. Do you... do you remember telling me what year it is? Uh-huh, and I answered you. Sixteen hundred and sixty-three. Yes, indeed you did. And I'm governor of perdition. And we have two children, and all is fine. Well, you had us worried something awful there for some time. And you did speak of some things that were quite unsettling. But it looks as though your fever has finally broke and you've come back to us. 
Yes, home. Oh, no place I'd rather be. Yet I knew that I was not home. I once again heard the music box in another room, faintly turning its gears and creating its tune. I wondered who was making it play. I was afraid of where it might take me next. Where was I? Where had I been? I knew where I should be. Yes, it had all finally come back to me. 300 years in the future, 300 years in the past. I had been bounced around at the mercy of some unseen force. Neither time was where I belonged. I thought about something I once heard from a fellow parishioner some years back, about certain souls that are that are simply uprooted and placed somewhere else. Transmigrated, she called it. Could that have been what happened to me? Or was the blood really mine? Was this what it was like to die? Or was it all a dream? I could no longer be for certain. I did know, however, that I had memories that the others would never understand. Not here, not now. I would have to be cautious as to what I said and how I said it. They assumed I had been ill. I would have to let them believe that that was the cause of my strange actions and the things I said while I lay unconscious. Only I knew it had nothing to do with the fever. I had existed in a different time, in a different place. And more importantly, I had been given a glimpse into a future in which humanity had failed. Whether it was my bloodline or simply a warning for all of us. Alas, if, uh, if I did share what I knew, they would surely dub me a witch. My God, how crazy that sounds. The gears were turning ever faster. My wife, <laughs> she held my hand and softly wept. And I lay there afraid. The unknown. I couldn't help but ponder it, quietly, and with anticipation and dread, I thought about the future, and what that future might bring. Join us again soon for another episode of Nightshade. Episode 3, Jack in the Box, features the voices of Heidi Lynn as Amelia, Robin Mudge as Jacqueline, and Casey Krause as Jack. We have been thrilled to share our stories with you and have loved receiving your input. Please visit www.lakeavalonentertainment.com for more information on our cast and crew, as well as some fun extra content. Be sure to explore all of Lake Avalon while you are there. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to Nightshade on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app. Leave us a like, a comment, or a review to help us reach even more podcast lovers like you. Can't find us in your favorite place for podcasts? Email robinmudge at lakeavalonentertainment.com or interact with us on social media and let us know. Thank you so much for listening, and may your life be far from normal. <laughs>